ladies and gentlemen welcome to another uh, lessons for leaders by the institute of business management i on behalf of the management on behalf of the alumni association welcome all of you uh, welcome to the evening the afternoon and the morning show uh, since we have attendees from all over the world so welcome all uh, we are hosting you from karachi uh, iubm lessons for leaders saying true to our values we bring to you whatever is the hottest topic around the world and right now it's pandemic and what we are talking about the pandemic in its eighth week specifically in karachi is a city locked down for almost eight week and what are the leaders talking about leaders today are talking about sustainability they're talking about their business and their most important asset their people in today's article in dawn eight out of 10 karachiites know of a person who's lost a job population in thousands and thousands are actually without a job globally specifically our first panelist is from new york and he'll be telling you more what's happening right now in that part of the world everyone is facing the challenge my question to all of yourselves who was doing us who's listening to us how are you doing how is your business how is your livelihood how is the lo lockdown the pandemic how is it affecting you now facing this dilemma all across the world we want to talk to all those leaders the leaders may be in the corporate world maybe with the brands or maybe leaders at home possibly and more importantly the homemakers you might have help you definitely have some support systems if you are in this part of the world may it be a driver may it be a maid may it be servants and additional support services now being a leader you got to take a call and today's call is a difficult one we have an expert panel with us who is going to really talk about the difficult and different angles may it be technical it would be definitely human based on how to tackle these kind of difficult situation in a leader's life like always it's a zoom meeting so house rules before we start it's a zoom meeting so we would definitely request all of you to come and chip in your questions uh, send it through chat uh, we would definitely not be having any audio participation uh, it would only be allowed for panelists uh, all panelists we've got a good range of panelists uh, from all over the world experience uh, we will be talking to you for 4 to 5 minutes on uh, the session we will be uh, also looking at your questions and the next 5 minutes i will be moderating and i will also talk about a few of the uh, questions that we would want to pose to them in the next 4 to 5 minutes towards the end there will be a thank you note and an address by the president of iubm mr talib kareem and uh, that is how we would look at around somewhere around 90 minutes for this entire session so stay tuned uh, we have got a lot of exciting stuff coming your way and a lot of tips for all the leaders and lessons for all the leaders coming your way now introducing our first panelist today tarik khan the founder and ceo global diversity marketing adjunct professor of new york university tarik is a global public speaker a recognized business leader founder and ceo of global diversity marketing and global diversity university tarik has a distinguished 20 years corporate experience and a career mostly working at global organizations around the world he serves on the board of directors of three leading non-profit organizations and is also a board trustee at the stanford university usa ladies and gentlemen i present to you our first panelist today tarik khan tarik welcome assalam alaikum bro thank you for the kind introduction my pleasure tarik how are you doing 
Um, Let's ask you first, this question first. First of all, um, um, Salaam Alaikum, and I want to thank IOBM and Kamran for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this esteemed panel. Um, you all had your iftar. Uh, here it is 1.30 in the afternoon, so I'll try to keep my energy level. So I'm still far, Hamara Rosa Jaha, it's about 8 p.m. So we have a few hours to go. So I'll try to keep my energy as, as strong as we can. But as you know that this global pandemic has impacted everyone, virtually everyone, every country in the world. Uh, so far, we have about 3.8 million people who have been infected with almost uh, 267,000 deaths across the world. If you look at uh, Pakistan, uh, fortunately, uh, I, the reason I'm saying fortunately, of course, um, I'm not undermining the lives that we have lost. We have lost about 591 people in Pakistan and 25,000 cases. When you compare that to US, um, we have 1.26 million cases and we have lost nearly 75,000 people. Just in New York alone, we have lost 25,000 people to this pandemic. And we have lost more Pakistanis in New York than Pakistan total. So obviously, the, the mindset is very numb. Um, but you know, when you look at the whole uh, opportunity, you, know, you have to look at the choices. A lot of times what you do is not in your control, but how you react to it is in your control. So I look at it as a simply, uh, it's the option is we have we have fear versus hope, uh, we have challenge versus opportunity, uh, and we have to be positive, and we have the opportunity of not working versus networking. So I think overall the environment is a little numb, uh, but we are trying to keep our positive attitude, and, and uh, most of us are confident that we'll overcome this. Inshallah, inshallah we will. <clears throat> so Tarek, a question that comes to all of us is, <clears throat> what is the new normal looking like? I think it's still being defined. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the only thing which is certain right now is we don't know much. Uh, mm -hmm. The world is trying to adjust. We are trying to understand the new rules of engagement. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people say the world has gone behind maybe 20 years. I think the world has gone forward 20 years. We used to talk about you know, virtual uh, workplace and virtual life. Uh, that, that is all going to happen very soon. And until we come out with a vaccine, and we are not changing major rules of engagement. Uh, mm -hmm. Companies, people, there is so much uncertainty everywhere uh, that people just simply don't know, you know, how their jobs would be, how their companies would be. And the companies are, are in, the, in, the same, in the same environment. They, they have, you know, we, we, we prepared for Vision 2020 for the last 10 years and none of us got it right. We had never thought that we would be sitting in this situation. So the new normals it is that we are uh, mm -hmm. critically thinking that how are we going to define this is all work in progress. So I think unprecedented right. times call for unprecedented leadership. So let's ask you the, the difficult question and the most important question that we've, uh, we will ask all of our panelists, cut salaries or cut jobs? So I think that, that that's a great question. Um, you know, I can share some of the practices in the US and globally. Um, when you look at it, um, let me give you the choices. So the companies have different choices. People have different choices. So the company, if you're a large organization, if you're a multinational organization, you are governed differently uh, compared to a cadence of an organization, which is local Pakistan organization. So mm -hmm. you know, when you cut salaries, obviously we have to understand the biggest liability any company has is its people. But the biggest asset a company has is also its people, right? And if you ask my sure. 25 years of career, what has, what has been the most difficult part of my career is finding good people. Mm -hmm. So when companies let good people go, it's very hard to replace them. So it's a very, very different. So what should companies do? The company should really, first of all, the most important thing that the company should do is have a very transparent communication with all their employees, that we are all going through this difficult time and we remain committed to mm -hmm. our biggest asset people. And then this is a time for company to really identify who are their key stakeholders. In our organization, we have not laid off, we are a small company, but we have not laid off any person. And the reason is now I'm thinking about maybe offering some bonuses. The reason we, you know, and it sounds ridiculous that we have no, you know, our business is really reduced, but why would we offer business? This is the time to show commitment to your people. Yes, there may be some people that, that have been a, a major liability, so this is the time the company should really review that and see, uh, you know, how do they uh, go forward. 
So that's what the company should do. Now, people-wise, I have a different recommendation. Um, mm -hmm. You know, show a very positive attitude in your company. If you show a negative attitude that everything is going bad and the sky is falling, uh, you would stand out as a negative person. Uh, go out of your way to do things because this is the time for you to really stand out. And this is the time for you to show the commitment to the company. And mm. instead of sitting down, everyone has now a few extra hours. We are not commuting. We are not, you know, going to shop outside. So what do you do with that time? So I think this is the, this is a biggest challenge, but I also see this is the biggest opportunity for everyone. For sure. So Tarek, a question comes to my mind. What would be the economic impact on these companies, short, medium, long term? I think we have not seen the tip of the iceberg when it comes to economic impact. So just to give mm -hmm. you an example, uh, we have 36 million unemployment uh, in, in US in last month. Uh, before the pandemic, our unemployment rate was 3.5%, which is the best in the last 50 years. Now, companies mm -hmm. are in, in very difficult situation right now because any extra expense, they are getting rid, rid of it. So uh, the example that I can mm -hmm. give, so let's say, again, if you and I lose a job tomorrow and, and we have no earning, depending on who you are, up Well, these companies that have made billions of dollars, they, their runways are not that long. I mean, two weeks after this pandemic, companies like Apple, which is the, the, the only trillion dollar face value company in, you know, in the world, needed packages. So companies work very differently. They plan in future, but if they don't get hit their numbers one quarter, they, they act in a panic. So I think the impact is going to be huge depending on what part mm -hmm. of the world you're in. Uh, some countries probably will see more, but from the US point, and, and if US doesn't do well, the whole world feels it. Mm -hmm. Um, so mm -hmm. I think the companies are going to go through now. Some industries will do very well. If you're in a farming, pharmaceutical industry, you'll do well. But if you travel in logic airlines, I think their impact would be much bigger than we are seeing right now. Uh, a question just came from the audience. Which business sectors do we consider are going to be in the most demand post pandemic? Any sector that will take an innovative approach. So yes, airline is, is going to be hit badly. But some airlines abroad will stand out during this time because they're going to take, I know some airlines in US, they're offering you tickets, buy the ticket right now. You can use it in mm -hmm. 12 months and they're, they're offering huge discounts. So you have to take an innovative approach. I think innovation is going to be key. We're all figuring it out. None of us you know, had a formula for this. We didn't we never plan it. So obviously mm -hmm. there's some industries, um, you know, Zoom is doing very well. Cisco is doing very well because these, these are the companies that are engaging people virtually. So when you come mm -hmm. out with an innovative approach, irrespective of whatever you do, I think you'll mm -hmm. stand out very well. What can employ, employees, uh, there's another question that just came up, uh, employees and companies do in these challenging times? I think the first right. thing that employees got to do mm -hmm. is really review your network. Um, mm -hmm. While you're working, even if your job is secure, go on LinkedIn. You know, we, we have seven pal panelists. Uh, reach out to every one of them. Make some connections. Uh, just like, you know, how this uh, pandemic has uh, expanded, you know, how it, uh, the virus has gone, that from one person, 3,500 people got it. Your networking mm -hmm. has to be in line with that. If, if your network of LinkedIn is 500 people, make sure it becomes 800 and 1,000. Show your company that you are fully committed and mm -hmm. you're a valuable asset for the company. This is the time to really stand out uh, because companies would be thinking that if they have 10 employees, how do they work with five? You should be among the five that they want to retain. So go out of your way, uh, be proactive. Uh, don't be a negative person. Yes, things are very difficult. Uh, you know, what happens is not in your control, but how you react is in your control. So I think the employees should have to stand out and show their commitment mm -hmm. and come out with innovative approaches for the company. Excellent. I, I, I really love the idea of stand, stand out, stand up, uh, go beyond the actual and innovate. Uh, what would multinationals react? I mean, how would they react differently compared to privately held organizations, that in your opinion? Right. So we work with a lot of multinationals and obviously they, they are global organization, but they have regional strategy as well. So if you work for Unilever or Procter & Gamble, these, these are huge companies. 
Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously consumer are spending more money, uh, you know, mm -hmm. in non-essential items. So they, they, have, they are seeing the impact. Now their cadence or their infrastructure or their rules of engagements are very different. They wanna be consistent with their approach. So if a large company, a multinational company is laying off people, then they may lay off less people in Pakistan and more in the US and Italy, but they, 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 there has to be a consistency in their policy. Obviously they're going to be, um, they're going to be depending on their region, regional leadership to provide mm -hmm. them uh, guidance, but you will see the impact because when the bottom line hits from the top, they might come to mm -hmm. Pakistan and say you cut off 5% and they might ask US to cut 20%. So obviously, obviously um, you are more at the stake when you, if you're working for a multinational organization. Uh, but again, mm -hmm. a lot of that remains to be unfolded in the next few months. Brilliant. Uh, Tarek, let's say I'm the CEO of a certain organization uh, who is under this threat right now. And my board has asked me to take this call. Right, it's like a, I mean, a very regular position right now. Most of the uh, leaders, C-suite, is facing this challenge. What might be uh, a trend that I might want to follow? A global trend that I would want to follow and say this might be the way forward, in your opinion. So my advice for a CEO of a company with five people or fifty thousand mm -hmm. people is very similar. The number one thing that you want to do is communication abroad. So imagine. Abroad, if you're mm -hmm. sitting in a plane and the plane is going to Islamabad and the plane starts shaking and then everybody looks around and there is a complete radio silence from the pilot. People look mm -hmm. around at each other and everyone make up their own story and hum apne kalma parna shuru kar dete, whatever. And if there is no communication from the pilot, then we say that we are going down. But if the plane is shaking and the pilot comes up and says, you know, the weather is not good, don't worry about it. We're going to be up in the air for the next 15 minutes, but we'll, we'll land safely. Mm -hmm the confidence comes back. So every leader must communicate transparent communication that these are difficult mm -hmm. times, but we are very committed to people and we mm -hmm. will overcome this. So I think whether you're a political leader or a global leader, you have to have a very strong positive message. There is no doubt in my mind that things will be okay. Now, they would be much better off once we have the vaccine, but we will come through this. But imagine if no one communicates with you and especially your leader, then you have a sense of insecurity and which is a very dangerous thing for any organization. Going through this time, surely. So a note to all the audiences who have joined in, uh, other than having great panelists, we have uh, a poll, which we're also doing on Zoom. So the first one, uh, which my colleague would just want to push out is uh, the following question. How concerned are you about your job? It's in, on your screens right now. Uh, everyone, you can see it. Uh, so we've got multiple options. And while we're talking to our first panelist, Tarek Khan, uh, CEO of Global Diversity Marketing, adjunct professor, New York University, we would also want to take your opinion. Let us know what you think. Ji Tarek, so we have at the Institute of Business Management and everywhere in the world, a lot of entrepreneurs, small companies, privately held organizations. What might be the advice that you would want to give out to them, to the entrepreneurs, the family owned business, the startups who are going through immense challenge. Eighth week, ninth week is going to be extremely vital for them to take a call. Uh, yeah, cut salaries. Yeah. And I come back to the, the topic, cut salaries or cut jobs. What is your uh, key advice? I think you have to be very creative. And, and since you mentioned family business, a lot of family mm -hmm. business have a tendency to cut uh, people outside the family, but I would do it the other way around. I'll keep mm -hmm. the outside people and maybe cut some family people if you must cut, right? And the reason is because people are mm -hmm. more connected to you, you can always get them back. But if you mm -hmm. lose an external employee, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to replace him or her. Second thing is, this is a great opportunity for you to think from a diverse perspective, right? You know, how are you represented through, do you have enough gender representation? Uh, if you're a family business, I think you probably are in a better position uh, to manage because, you know, your expenses and your profit and loss and your bottom line is managed differently than a large corporation. Large companies should really communicate to their senior leadership uh, that this is the time to really commit to people because this problem is, is not going away tomorrow, but obviously the normalcy, especially in Pakistan, will start much sooner than other countries. And 
once you lose a good talent, it takes you a lot of time to bring that person back. So I think the companies have to be very, very careful in not, now, if you must, I'd rather mm -hmm. have a communication with our team and share with them, we have two options, either we can let people go or we treat ourselves as a family and everyone takes a pay cut. And ask people anonymously to give you the feedback. When you let them feel that they are a part of the team, I think their, mm -hmm. their contribution is going to be uh, exceeding your expectation. Great. Uh, what kind of leadership is required to sail through such unprecedented crisis? I think, I think you need unprecedented leadership, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, leaders is not someone who follows. Leaders is a person who can take you a place where you cannot go. And they can see things which, which you cannot. I'll, I'll use the example of education center. So for example, I think the education also, uh, higher education is going to be impacted. I'm with New York University, which is the largest private university in the world. Just to give you an idea, NYU, New York University's annual budget is over $4, four billion. Four billion with a B, right? Whoa, okay. More than what we borrow from IMF. Now, mm -hmm. This summer alone, we will lose $200 million because people are not staying in the hostels. Now, how do we react to this? You know, there was not a single company planned at the beginning of 2020, they'll be losing 20 or 30% of their share, right? Mm -hmm. so we can act in panic or we could really take a very calm approach. And this is a leader's job to really ensure that after having a good communication, you create a strategic plan that what, what is our short-term goal and what is our long-term goal? And that, that might include for low, you know, to furlough some people. And when you mm -hmm. furlough staff, you're basically asking them to stay engaged with us, but we cannot afford you in, in the short term. Now, some people <laughs> pay for that and some people may not. So you really have to have a very customized approach and don't use you know, a one-size-fits-all approach for every organization. This brings us to a very interesting uh, follow something you used. A question to all the audiences. Have you heard of this uh, before? So everyone, and the question goes to the entire audiences who have joined us. We have Tariq Khan, uh, CEO of Global Diversity University, uh, talking to us. Uh, he's just used a very important and interesting point and a term, follow. So our next poll, is something that we are right now also posing towards yourself. Uh, the question is, have you experienced it? Do you know about it? Tarek, coming back to you, uh, we have the last couple of seconds uh, in your discussion, in your panel discussion. Can you tell us how you see things coming in future, in the next couple of months? So, um, Abrar, you know, uh, before you, move on to the next panelist. I'll, I'll have a piece of advice for everyone. And I see based on the list, most of these people are working in companies and you know some are middle level and some are senior level managers. Mm -hmm. I would recommend everybody to really pump up their networking. So you mm -hmm. know, this is what I told my students, young professionals that make a goal and the goal is 25, 10 and five. Explain what I mean by 25, 10 and five. Mm -hmm. Make a goal that every week you'll go on LinkedIn and connect with 25 new people that you have never connected with. And, and these are professional, I'm, I'm giving a professional advice. So find out who are the 25 people that, that are not on your network, but you would like to connect. And that, that brings you about you know, five people each day. Out of those 25 people, 10 people you should be able to talk to uh, on a favorable basis that, hey, I wanna talk to you about some networking opportunity. And then five of them, you wanna follow up. So if you follow this principle 25, 10, and 5 every week, within next few weeks, you'll have hundreds of people in your network. And every job in the world, I, I have been in this industry and I have, you know, I have never worked in Pakistan, but I have traveled to Pakistan every sing, single year in the last 35 years. Mm -hmm. I can tell mm -hmm. you that whether it's US or Pakistan, jobs are not given based on the qualification. They are given based on your networking. So you have to expand your network where you know that in case, because people said they are somewhat concerned with, with the current ec economy, that you should be confident that if you lose your job or the company lets you go, you are in a position there is somebody else who's waiting for you with an open arm that you, you would not have any gap in, in your professional career. So it's very important to really increase your networking. 
excellent excellent uh, tarik sahab i think you have nailed it on the head uh, the 25 10 and 5 principle that is a great learning for me as well uh, we will definitely add it to our uh, white paper and uh, ladies and gentlemen this was tarik khan all the way from new york thank you so much for joining us tarik uh, please stay online uh, we know you have another class in the next of uh, some minutes but uh, do things that you haven't done before Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tariq Khan standing up and giving an advice to all the leaders. Communicate, communicate. So we will move on to our next panelist. And thank you so much, Tariq Khan. It was a great opportunity talking to you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a next panelist who comes uh, from the field of management. And at the same time, leads is the director of Pakistan Institute of Management on Balance Scorecards, an accomplished management professional with 15 plus years of experience in the field of performance and strategy management. He's a balance scorecard professional with a unique set of credentials, holds a doctorate degree, as well as national and international certifications in the subject matter. He is credited with pioneering the development management and monitoring of this revolutionary concept within Pakistan and he's trained over hundreds of managers with the science and art associated with this management science. He possesses a diversified experience of operational analysis, human capital management and formulation of KPIs during tough times are part of his specialties and an word of thanks goes to all the team who put up this panel uh, together. So, I mean, uh, what can one ask for better? He distinguishes himself as a creative problem solver, formulating cross-functional teams and having a bottom line orientation, uh, something that he's done for organizations. I welcome Dr. Shahid Aslam Mirza. Shahid, welcome to the panel. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for having me. I hope you can hear me. Perfectly well. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I must thank IBM for uh, affording me this opportunity and Mr. Kamran as well. Uh, it'll be a, a pleasure to speak to you all. Ji uh, Shahid, so we would want to take an approach in terms of understanding. Let's ask you the difficult question first. Cut salaries. Or cut jobs. Uh, you know, I wish it was said as simple as that, black and white. <laughs> Nothing uh, in life ever is black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, considering that both these um, approaches have worked well for a few organizations, in the normal time, we must have a an offset approach during the pandemic. We must mm -hmm. realize that uh, both organizations and the employees they're going through tough times. Uh, a hard hand on any side will either collapse the business or uh, will make the uh, employees lose interest in, the, in their jobs. So perhaps mm -hmm. a, uh, a calculated mix of uh, trying to find out who are your uh, star players, who are your running horses, uh, mm -hmm. laying more bets on them, keeping them, making sure they're, they're paid well, uh, reducing costs elsewhere, I think one of the key points can be taken up here is that HR isn't necessarily a liability. HR is more of an asset and if you have to cut costs, you'll probably mm -hmm. find other avenues in which you can cut costs as well. But it, ha it has to cut down, come down to cutting of pays. There is an example of, uh, I mean, you mentioned the furlough system. Uh, there, mm -hmm. uh, it's available both in the public sector and the private sector where you can uh, skim down your employees to the, the bare minimum, uh, keeping them on, on pay scales, reducing their allowances, and mm -hmm. certainly by keeping them abreast of the situation, letting them know mm -hmm. that yes, this pandemic requires extra, uh, extra circumstances or extra efforts on both ends. And you need to assure your employees, because uh, as Tariq mentioned, that these are, are times of great threats and opportunities. Every organization at the moment is going through the same, um, same dilemma. It is an opportunity for organizations to shine through. And if you can shine through during these testing times, the future is very bright for you. So if, I, if you were to ask me, maintain a calculated balance. 
layoff individuals that you can uh, be uh, 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 you can survive without and let them be on on financial benefits make sure you hedge the top end first make sure uh, the people at the bottom see that the the big players they're, they're chipping in big time having greater percentages at the top lower percentages uh, at the bottom and mm -hmm. and let the employees feel that they're uh, they're becoming part of the organization get them the feel give them the feel of the citizenship of the organization that it's mm -hmm. the pandemic is not only hit individuals it is hit okay. the organization as a whole as the family as a whole and the family each member of the family has to put sacrifices the eldest puts the the biggest sacrifices the youngest or the uh, people down the food chain uh, you must uh, um, try to resolve these issues amicably. I, I just saw a, a, a comment pop up. Ilya said that then mm -hmm. you certainly right. Nothing is easy. Laying off people isn't easy at all. Telling them to have a pay cut isn't easy at all. But what is the right. alternative uh, mm -hmm. for employees as well? Imagine um, uh, these times are uh, are very testing times. Even if you mm -hmm. uh, think of uh, uh, jumping ship there aren't many opportunities that, that exist out at the moment and and True. the atmosphere outside is is very gloomy so uh, i think a mix of uh, letting go of people um uh, reducing the pay scales of a few but certainly mm -hmm. positive engagement by the the top management uh, making sure that uh, the employees they understand that every one of them as a family are in this together um. The audience feel it's easier said than done. Uh, you are an expert on balance code card. Can you just explain to us how balance code card has helped organizations, Shahid, uh, once you are in this uh, conundrum of salary cuts in a specific pandemic situation, please? Absolutely. So uh, first we need to realize that this pandemic is um, unprecedented only for about, uh, for about 100 years. We've had this. Uh, occurring uh, uh, back in the the early uh, 20th century as well. Um, it's mm -hmm. difficult to have lessons from back then, but certainly what we can do is rely on whatever training, whatever experience that we've, we've gathered on. And what Balance mm -hmm. Scorecard does is it it produces a performance and strategy management assessment of organizations. It tells mm -hmm. you how each department is is doing uh, in terms of uh, scales and milestones that you set. Which department is is uh, lacking behind? Which department is improving? What individuals are performing par excellence? Which individuals are, are 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 not? And all these activities are lined up to your strategy. If you don't have balance scorecard implemented in your organization, the first thing it'll do is it, it'll make you lean. It'll make sure that you only do the things that are required to attain your uh, vision and mission of the organization and leave mm -hmm. aside everything else. So it it's actually mm -hmm. gives you a very good assessment of what uh, your organization is all about, what are its core values. And if you have mm -hmm. a, a, a thorough look through in your organization, I think this is something that all organizations must do at the moment is, what are your key core uh, values? What are the key ingredients of the organization? What keeps you going? And focus on those issues and shed off the weights that you're, you're carrying them around which you could have uh, survived with uh, in situations other than pandemic. So balance scorecard, it gives you a, a performance management uh, system. It uh, values or, or gauges all your departments uh, and um, tells you how they're performing. It helps you in uh, dividing the, uh, the resources that you have within the departments that you think are performing the best. Whatever department is making you uh, the best outcomes, that is the department you, you need to focus and also ensure that uh, we must approach this holistically. It cannot be done at one tier alone. All tiers must bear the brunt. Only then you you feel that this organization is something uh, to hold on to. If you can create an environment in a pandemic that we will mm -hmm. look after you, the employee is going to stick around. He's going to stick around because he knows if uh, when the going was getting tough, they didn't let you off. So you will become more committed to this, this organization. So this is a, a great opportunity for the leaders to step it up, make sure 
everybody understands what this uh, pandemic is doing to the organization uh, and that we are uh, uh, we are fairly monitoring every mm. uh, department within the organization making mm -hmm. sure everybody is, is looked after as well great uh, all those audiences who have just joined us we are in conversation with dr shahid aslam mirza director of pakistan institute of balance scorecard uh, dr saab great having this conversation the question just came to us what are the rules of cost cuts applying to these abnormal circumstances like pandemic you know the best thing is you can write your own rule book at the moment because there are no rules for a situation like this uh, but you got to stick to your basics you got to value the human resource you got to value the core essence of your of your business you need people to remain comfortable within the organization there's one word that i'm mm -hmm. trying to use these days uh, within the the management leaders is, is the word the word is empathy create a sense yeah. of empathy understand uh, what the employees are going through uh, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, the lack of clarity from from everywhere where of how long this is going to last how badly is it going to affect us this creates mm -hmm. a lot of confusion for the employees but if, in these testing times if you can give them a back if you, if you can mm -hmm. tell them that you you got to stick to your guns then that is the way uh, to move forward so if you want my uh, uh, rule number 1 as as the rule for the pandemic is first have a thorough shakedown of your organization see what issues what are your core values what is your core business stick to that two have a, a thorough performance management analysis of all your people let them know that you will value good work let them know that you uh, intend maintaining the levels of hr that you have uh, have had for for so long so uh, uh, with this third is for, especially for the employees uh, you know stay put this is not the time to to jump ship uh, keep your options open everybody does that perhaps it is a time uh, in which you need to keep more options open than than others but mm -hmm. make sure that you uh, solidify your seat within the within the organization put in a little more uh, Put in your the extra bit, you know, giving the 120 percent rule. So that is something uh, we must adopt as as rules for this pandemic. Excellent. Uh, in conversation with uh, Dr. Shahid Mirza, thank you very much. Uh, that is what we were allowed on time. Uh, thank you so much for all the questions with, uh, which are just pouring in. Uh, please continue doing that. Keep asking us the questions. We will definitely answer them back, and as a commitment, uh, lessons for leaders at IOBM, we will be definitely writing uh, a white paper just to support what are the learnings for all those who couldn't join us today. Uh, they were engaged somewhere else or wanted to, but they had other commitments as of right now. This is the month of Ramadan. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Shahid, for uh, the gems of wisdom. Calculate your Thank risks, you shaking the organization, reviewing HR and your PMS at the same time, communicate, communicate, and step forward. That's all for the leaders from Dr. Shahid Mirza. Uh, we're very pleased. Uh, please stay on board, uh, Shahid. We are moving to our next panelist for the opening discussion. Uh, our next panelist, I'm honored. Uh, to introduce Farhan Ahmed, the Head of External Communications and Public Affairs at uh, Standard Chartered Bank and the President of IUBM Association. Uh, he is a proud alumni. Farhan has had a fantastic career with organizations like Nestle, HSBC Bank and Standard Chartered Bank. The organization which has posted 11 billion PKR profit in 2019. They've had a stellar of a year. He's a gem of a person, loves to engage and contribute across all walks of life, from Karachi United, diversity, uh, women entrepreneurship, to non-profit boards, and also to cycling clubs. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, presenting my good friend, Farhan Ahmed. Thank you Hi, very Farhan. much. Very elaborate and illustrious kind of introduction. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor always to be, you know, on a panel for IOBM, which is something that's really, really close to my heart. So, Jibra. 
Farhan, we've had a lot of discussion, uh, cut salaries or cut jobs. I will come to that. And that's kind of a people talk. But as a marketeer, what kind of a communication, uh, I mean, Tariq has rightly pointed out, communicate, communicate, communicate. You're looking at external communications for a brilliant organization. You're leading teams. What kind of a new normal message that you'd like to send out to the marketeers and the communication teams? Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Abrar. Abrar, so, I mean, um, if you say, if you ask me, you know, cut jobs or, uh, you know, look at the other option, I mm -hmm. would, but I really want to step back. And I would like to say that, you know, this is what we're calling this time now is the new norm. And when we say it's the norm, the one thing that we need to do is to look at it in a different and a new perspective into life. We need to really, you know, step back, rethink, rewire ourselves as individuals, as organizations, and, you know, as, as teams as well. The world's going to be different. How are we kind of adapting ourselves to be in that new world is the bigger challenge. So for me, for me, the question more is that, you know, yes, there is, uh, you know, there, there is a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, companies are, 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 are going down, things are looking very depressing. But if I, if I question the flip side, I think there's a huge opportunity out there. And, 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 you know, that opportunity is something that people who start thinking about it, who start, you know, um, being more innovative, being more innovative, being more creative. I think that's the opportunity that they're going to get onto. So if you look, if, if, if you look, you know, just pre pandemic, a lot of the companies that were considered unicorns in just mm -hmm. a two month time frame have actually gone towards a bankruptcy side. And some of the businesses that were, that were supposedly going out of fashion or out of league have really come back into, you know, being the top business. So I think what is key to the whole piece is, A, this is a time when you really, really need to be very, very client-centric. You need to know mm -hmm. how your customer behaves. You need to know how your customer is, is going to react. You see, the demand for the product or the demand for the service may be slightly going down in terms of volume, but the demand will still be there. You know, what people are used to doing, people will do. They will just consume that service or that product maybe in a different manner. And for us and, and for anybody for that matter, I think the bigger challenge is, is how well do we really know our customers? This is the time when it's, it's, it's all, all, all going to uh, come out, uh, you know, to play. And I think one of, the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the things that I would really, really like to give as a message to all, uh, to all companies and to everybody is nobody is prepared. Nobody knew what was coming up. Nobody still knows what it is going to be like. Mm -hmm. Let people experiment, Ex do some experimentations in terms of do some testing, learn, you know, reach out to your people. It, you know, use it as an opportunity. I mean, you can use it and say, oh my God, you know, my business is going shut. I'm just, I, I, need to, I need to close shop and move on. But it's that mm -hmm. thought of how you sustain and how you get out of it because eventually you'll have to, you'll have to, you know, uh, You'll have to get back in and earn a livelihood. You have to move on with life. So think how you can make, make a difference. Think how you can rewire yourself. I mean, you know, then that's, that's, I think, uh, I would use this as an opportunity rather than as something to, you know, say that, oh, oh my God, this, we're going bust. I think what we need to really think is how do we, how do, we do things differently? I mean, look, there's, there's, there's a, a major shift in the entire ecosystem of doing business. Now, mm -hmm. is your business adapting to that thing? I mean, I just read a question on, on the chat, which was on SME business. If you ask me, I think the, 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 the biggest beneficiary of the COVID uh, you know, piece post-COVID is going to be the SME industry because they would be leaner, smaller organizations who would be much more flexible, much more experimental to, and, you know, and, and would not have a real huge cost base. Whereas companies which have a big cost base will have a much bigger challenge to, um, you know, to adapt to. The second piece that I really believe in is that once COVID kind of, uh, once the world starts opening up, there's going to be a lot of decentralization of existing, of existing trade opportunities. So where you see a lot of trade being, 
being, being centered around some countries at this point in time, there will be, and there are already talks around the world that we need to decentralize, you know, or, or open up our trade businesses with other, with other countries and other suppliers as well who, who have perhaps done well or who are more resilient to such uh, conditions. So I, I kind of feel that, you know, there's, there's a huge opportunity, but, but I just feel that we need to look at it with an optimistic point of view, more than a pessimistic point of view. And that's, that's going to be the key differentiator for people, you know, uh, going forward. So be optimistic, you know, expand your network, expand your thinking, be creative, be innovative. I think those are going to be the key things uh, when, we, when we look at, uh, you know, the post-COVID opportunity. And that's how I would look at it. You know, so instead of saying, I want to, you know, I want to cut employees. I would actually challenge my employees that, look, this is the new world. How do we make more money? How do we make more revenue? How do we reach out better to our clients? What can we do so that we're all happy? It may not be a very, uh, it may not be an immediate short-term gain, but you'll still get mm -hmm. some win somewhere down the road. It's worth the experiment, actually. I think agility, so that, that's my... You're 100% right. Uh, sorry is the key we have heard agility we have heard communication we have heard positive communication uh, how do you communicate for to the communications team what is the new normal that you are asking them to you know look into what is the new normal what are the skills that you would want them to sharpen up well i think uh, uh, initially when you know now uh, more than ever i think the whole digital and social communications is becoming a much larger piece in your overall communication strategy. Mm -hmm. So whereas mm -hmm. before you, you know, you could, you could look at other things and, but, but then, you know, there, there also, there's all a flip side to it. But I think that, you know, um, we were moving into a phase where, uh, where, you know, digital consumption of content was much more higher and everything. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think that's one of the key things for us as well that, you know, we've looked at how do we, how do we remain more connected? What are the avenues that we can look at where, where we can do, you know, um, a, a better outreach. And one of the things that I think for, for larger companies has been that, you know, maybe um, you need to look at more global, uh, global, avenues to kind of reach out to your 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 staff as well as compared to you know just centralized or depending on um, on on just one uh, piece mm -hmm. for that so so that's the play but but interestingly so like i was saying uh, just a little bit before so television in pakistan was was something that you know marketers at one point in time said that it's it's the most important say you know uh, platform to be on in terms of advertising and then came a time where we said no digital is the end thing and you know 50 percent of revenue from television was moving to digital now covid lockdown television has come back into as as a primary source of entertainment for people now, not everybody mm -hmm. would consume, um, you know, uh, digital uh, digitally through YouTube content and all that. So television is very much back in. So, so I think, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a learning and an evolutionary thing at this point in, t in time as well. I think yeah. that's another key, learning and evolution. There are hundreds of courses which are available right now, free courses. Uh, I'm also looking at uh, picking up a few. What would be, Farhan, a couple of top takeaways if I would just ask you for a marketeer who has to communicate who is in the tough time like let's put you through the tough question yeah. cut salaries or cut jobs what would you do well like I said I think I would a be open with my team be transparent in my communication and and I would rather challenge them to say that you know go out there show me how we can make more money I think that is there People are spending. It's not that people have st stopped spending. What is mm -hmm. it they're buying? How is it they're buying? That's what to me is more important. And, that, and I think that would be my takeaway to all the SMEs, especially who, who are listening to us today, that you, know, mm -hmm. you need to really, really look at that, that, that supply chain ecosystem is something that SMEs really need to look at because I think there's going to be some major disruption. Just like, I mean, take the educational sector for that matter. Now, educational sector is more or less we've been you know we've actually been struggling to 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 get out get the right solution where we would be able to reach the 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 25 million odd children who don't go to school and and you know while our covid has actually 
given us that opportunity where now we're seeing internationally, where it's like in Dubai recently, they just opened a, they've opened a, a semi-digital school which says that your kids will come into the, the physical premises two days and be working from home three days a week or vice versa. And, you know, we, you're just seeing that disruption. So the opportunity exists. I think it's about you thinking, yeah, you know, uh, with, with a, uh, as to how you can, you can really differentiate your business and how you can reach out to your client better. That, that would be my challenge rather than to say, okay, I want to cut jobs or I want to, I want to look at cut costs. Uh, I mean, you know, cut salaries or cut jobs. I would put the challenge across that way first and try that. And it's, I mean, it, 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 it's, uh, it's something worth a shot to be, to be very honest, if, if you ask me. Do a mute. Abrar. Sorry about yeah. that. Uh, SMEs and KYC, know your customer. This was uh, in great conversation with Farhan Ahmed, head of external communications at uh, and public affairs at Standard Chartered Bank. Thank you so much, Farhan. Please uh, stay on board. Uh, we would Thank you. move on to our next panelist, uh, Isan Jan Alawala, the CEO of Training Impact. Isa. Isa Jan Alawala is a manufacturing management professional training and a human capital leader, a certified trainer, a coach, organizational and change management specialist. His mantra is adding value to mankind. Ladies and gentlemen, I would want to welcome Esan Alawala. That will be Isa, bro. Isa Alawala. Isa Alawala. <laughs> I'm right. sorry. How are you doing, Isa, today? Very well, Alhamdulillah. I'm really enjoying that, and it's a it's a big responsibility after hearing uh, the panelists before you. There's very little you can offer after such uh, valuable insights that came in. I'm really interested. Uh, I'm a lean Six Sigma specialist. Uh, I really go for uh, the Six Sigma profiles. I have heard marketeers. I have heard uh, the global diversity champion speaking. Uh, Balance scorecard has just and the communication uh, leader has just uh, also given his opinion. Uh, how can one look at uh, saving jobs by not cutting calories, uh, salaries? Uh, the way I would like to answer that is that the uh, situation which we are in where we are thinking that shall we cut salaries or shall we cut the jobs? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, even before times like these, and when I was uh, leading the HR in the companies as well, uh, mm -hmm. we used to be. Uh, uh, kafi narazgi se dikha jata tha, kyunke hum, kyunke jab logon ko, when we were bringing people in the organization, we used to chun chun ke laate the aur ladai karte the, and we used to ask this question: ke, Do we really need these people, or do mm -hmm. we really need as many people as we are trying to hire? Can we figure out ways that uh, we can do uh, jobs more effectively, more efficiently? Because uh, this pandemic is something none of us in this panel and probably a lot of us in this participant list have not seen that. In the world, Ebola came in 1918, there was Spanish flu, but Ebola never affected us, never became a pandemic. It, it was more of an epidemic and it was more localized to a particular region. Uh, but we always, I always used to believe is that ke pandemic I and I, but uh, bad times do come in the organizations. So there is always just like an ECGT, there is a good time, there is a bad time. And you should always look uh, for, the, for the bad time to come because your product may not sell, there may be a, an, another competition that will come in. So you should always be very careful about how you effectively allocate resources. So, uh, so that was the question uh, is that if you say that we cut the jobs or the salary, if this situation has come to us and we have to think that there are people who are not performing well and they are not effective right now, so there are people who are not performing well and they are not effective right now, so mm -hmm. why the question now? It's just been 60 days since Pakistan and you know, a, little, a couple of uh, for more weeks than in the world, when the world has been locked down, they have started implementing the lockdown. So why suddenly? Uh, why didn't you know and why now you see somebody who's ineffective? So that's my take on that. Brilliant. SMEs, uh, we have been prompted uh, 
smaller businesses, Farhan also spoke about smaller businesses. In your uh, experience, have you seen SMEs going through such rough times? What would be your advice, key takeaways, Isa, on, on that subject? Uh, I think uh, SMEs uh, in the current times or se pehle wale time ke andar bhi dekha jaye, to yes, uh, the, the situations are good and bad everywhere as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw a question somewhere in the chat uh, that ke how does uh, Setia organizations, uh, you know, that's what we call entrepreneurial organizations over here, how would they respond and uh, how would multinationals respond? Well, I, my answer to that is that it, A, it varies from industry to industry. Uh, secondly, it also varies from what kind of position the company is in right now. So the, 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 the P&L could be better for an A company and the P&L could have been really bad in the last few months or years for a company and then they suddenly landed up into a pandemic like that. So it's, it's different. So uh, yes, I've seen some uh, small SMEs, entrepreneur run businesses have done really well to cut down costs to protect employees. And I've also seen uh, really money-making multinationals uh, couldn't wait for 30 days or 45 days and decided to let go of people. So I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's your own resilience and how much uh, you value the human capital. That's how it's coming out now and how uh, you are treating Brilliant. Uh, another question that just popped up, shall we lay off non-performers or return jobs just to save the top performers and keep them or keep paying them in full? Your take on that, Isa? Sorry, Isa, uh, could you hear the question? I think we're having some technical issues at Isa. So we're having a lot of uh, uh, questions uh, through chat. Everyone, thank you very much. There is a question that has just come up, and thank you for asking that question. Let's just do another poll. Uh, one of our uh, members who's uh, listening in is saying layoffs are not common in Pakistan, and maybe the pandemic can bring it more over here. So let's just do a quick poll while Isa is back. Uh, we'll be answering our question. Let's do another poll in which we'd say, are you familiar to layoffs in Pakistan? Yes or no? And let's just have a quick poll around that. Isa, the question that I had asked, uh, you want me to repeat that? Yeah, please. I think I uh, lost my connection Indeed. for a few seconds and I missed it. It was around uh, laying off non-performers. You have to really, so you're in the CEO's shoe. And at yeah. this point in time, you have to advise whether to cut salaries or cut jobs. So would you want to lay off the non-performers? You want me to give a direct answer? Please do. <laughs> yes, I would want to, uh, in, in different times, I would want to lay off the non-performers. Mm-hmm. But for now, I would want to uh, cut down other expenses and uh-huh. uh, maybe cut down a bit of salaries, but retain as many as people can. Because uh, right now, uh, in other times, when you lay somebody off uh, from anywhere between a month to a maximum of six months, people do find a job. That's my experience. But right mm-hmm. now, it's very uncertain and uh, the, the, it's everywhere it's closed. People, wherever they knock anywhere, the, the jobs are mm-hmm. closed. Sorry, we'll come back later. Mm-hmm. We don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, I would want to protect them right now. For Excellent. As as I, think, I think that's a brilliant answer, Isa. Uh, uncertain times, ladies and gentlemen, don't take hasty decisions. Uh, we'll just take one more question from you, Isa, uh, and we move on to the next panelist. Uh, sure. Companies who are doing well, uh, like essential products, FMCGs, uh, they're doing some good practices or they're just lucky. Uh, can the other businesses also pick up some examples from them? Well, uh, if, uh, your voice uh, trailed off a little bit, but uh, let me see if I picked up the question correct. Yes, some essential industries like, uh, you know, the grocery items and uh, the, the detergents and the, the pharmaceutical, they are doing well. Uh, so, uh, and what can other companies do uh, to be relevant? Well, uh, there will always be some industries that will uh, remain essential items no matter uh, what the times are. 
but there are some industries who have gained in the past uh, 15 to 20 years where now we cannot live without internet. Imagine a time these days, if okay, this pandemic would have happened, so you and I we could not be talking like this. So uh, we just need to keep an eye on uh, how the world is progressing and invest in industries where people are going to be uh, more interested in. So it's just same, similar to that, okay, uh, when typewriter on the computers came, people rejected and they thought they lost, they will lose their jobs. Mm-hmm. But in the future, mm-hmm. uh, I personally see in Pakistan also, there is a lot of uh, uh, serious talk going on that, you know, as our uh, health systems have been very weak. So I see a, a, a very large industry popping up where you will need administrators, you will need doctors and health workers, but of course you will need uh, the whole chain, the, the supply chain and everything. So the new jobs may just go from here to another place. So, so yes, let's keep an eye on wherever, whatever the world is demanding. That's where you should be heading, not being stubborn about it. So we are in conversation with Isa Alawala, the CEO of Training Impact. Just before we let you go, Isa, one last question. Uh, yeah. Should we cut? Wasn't that the last one? <laughs> well, Sorry, we come again. One more. <laughs> should we? Is it better to cut benefits and continue paying in full? Your quick take on that. Yes, cut the benefits for now, and when you start making money again, uh, bring it up again. But pay the salaries. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. We were in conversation, uh, and we move on to our uh, uh, final panelist. Thank you very much, Isa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have, uh, as they say, save the best for the last, or the show is still not over. Uh, we have with us Ahmed Ali Zia, the CEO, People and Business Planning, HRSG. Ahmed has over 28 years of experience and has worked with some of the top Fortune 100 MNCs, including Unilever, PNG. 3M, Pfizer, Artel, Aptek, Muller & Phipps, and GSK in senior HR and supply chain roles in the Middle East as well as in Pakistan. A few of his notable corporate roles in GSK, he's led them in HR as cluster head of Pakistan and the Iran markets. Ahmed has substantial experience in the Middle East markets with HR challenges, having headed the HR functions uh, for Unilever, KSA and Gulf, and with the major family business, Ali Ben Ali Group in Qatar. During all of his senior HR uh, leadership roles, Ahmed has worked closely on projects of leadership teams, rolling out HR initiatives, including organization design, organization development, talent management, and you must have understood why we have kept him for the last. Ahmed holds a level seven CIPD holds up to seven CIPD certifications in HR and ER with distinction from Charan Institute of Personal Development. Let's put our hands together and welcome Ahmed Alizia to come and comment on our today's topic. Ahmed, we are pleased and we are very honored for you to join us today. Cut salaries or cut jobs. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Abrar, and uh, this is uh, very humbling the way you have introduced me, so thank you very much because there are many distinguished panelists uh, uh, on the panel, so I'm uh, very humbled, and uh, I must say um, I have chosen HR as a career out of uh, passion. I'm uh, an engineer by background, but having chosen HR as a, as a career myself by choice, I have always been passionate about people and have always believed that uh, irrespective of the industry or the sector or the kind of business you are in, uh, it's always the people who make a difference when it comes to uh, the performance of the companies. Uh, and the rest is only on papers. Yeah, so look at the top uh, fortune companies 10 years ago or today uh, or maybe 50 years ago, the differentiator was always people and having worked for you know some big companies uh, i have always felt that you know the the uh, the vision and the mission and all other plans are mostly uh, similar no company ever says that they want to make losses or they don't want to uh, you know do a good business 
and it's always the, the quality of the people they uh, are able to hire and bring on board uh, who make a difference in the end, who uh, help these companies realize in reality their plans or not. So I am always a, a people's champion. And now I'm, uh, uh, you know, with uh, almost three decades of corporate experience, I'm now sitting on the other side of the table and uh, I am uh, working with a lot of uh, companies. There are at least 500 clients that we serve uh, as HRSG. It's the largest HR company in Pakistan. And my job is to partner, actually partner with those clients, uh, especially in these tough times. Uh, and and uh, my view is that, uh, you know, there are companies who are in, in, in uh, you know, different uh, phases of their financial year. So for some companies, the financial year starts in July, closes in June. So they were in uh, uh, the third end of the third quarter uh, of the financial year when the crisis hit. Uh, and for some companies whose financial year runs from January to December, they uh, had just started the year. So having spoken to uh, some of the companies uh, that we serve, uh, I noticed that there are companies, uh, and, and these are both uh, local as well as some MNCs, uh, who have already hit the top line and the bottom line. So the business grew substantially in the first two quarters, and they have achieved their uh, revenues and, and also have made profits and they are in a good position to sustain the crisis at least till the end of the financial year. And these are the companies uh, who are despite the lockdown are not thinking about laying off people and they are uh, you know monitoring the situation as uh, uh, you know by the day and they are uh, thinking that uh, they will review it uh, once things get normalized and as you can see the world in in uh, in uh, Pakistan in particular and the world in general is now coming to terms with the uh, COVID it's a new reality uh, we are all accepting the fact that you know it's a situation we need to manage it's not going to go away it's going to be a part of our lives as you know we had bird flu we had uh, you know the, the the MERS we had the dengue there were more deaths by dengue in Pakistan than, uh, alhamdulillah, so far what we have had with uh, with COVID. So, uh, so the, there are companies who are uh, monitoring their uh, P and Ls and also, uh, you know, taking care of their people like that. There are other companies which uh, uh, have, as I said, had just started the year and then this crisis hit. They are uh, a bit shaky, and you know, even when you go to those companies and talk to them. Uh, and I have seen that, I've experienced that myself. There are companies who make what we call the BCPs, the business continuity plans. And yes, there were very few companies which go to the extent of, you know, uh, having a plan to manage a crisis of uh, such a big magnitude like this pandemic. But, uh, you know, they create worse scenarios and, uh, and then they have contingency plans to run the business during those uh, uncertain times. So there are many companies who had some very robust BCPs with them, and that is what is helping them. So for example, when I was in Unilever, I remember every year the leadership team had to go through a course where we were uh, given case studies to, uh, and in those days, you know, terrorism was a big issue for Pakistan. So we were uh, actually trained to, uh, to uh, make sure that the business wouldn't suffer. And I was heading HR in those days. I remember those were the days when you know, almost 50 people were getting killed on the roads on an average every day in Karachi. And we were operating in that environment. And we mm -hmm. uh, knew exactly what to do in, uh, in such situations when people couldn't make it to the office, when people had to work from home. So, you know, these were the things that started in those companies who had been operating in those ground realities uh, for, for some time. And they made sure that their BCPs were robust. Uh, and those are the companies which have been able to manage the crisis pretty well so far. Then there are other companies who are uh, uh, who didn't have such robust BCPs, and obviously they are now, uh, as I I would say, as uh, as somebody just said, uh, you know, they are uh, nervous, they are shaky, they don't know what to do. So my view on it is that. If companies are thinking about laying off people in, in a scenario where, you know, everyone else is more or less thinking on the same lines, and we know in reality, if you look at the numbers, as Dr. Tariq also said, 
uh, Pakistan is in a much better shape than the rest of the world. And hopefully, inshallah, by next week, we are going to come out of the lockdown slowly. And if you look at the roads in Islamabad or Karachi, you know, you see a lot of traffic. So it's not that uh, bad, first of all. So let's always look at the half glass full. And now, as I said, people are learning to cope up with the pandemic and learn to manage their lives and protect themselves better than where we were, let's say, six weeks back. So with that situation uh, evolving, um, a lot of companies are getting their confidence back. And when I say this, I say this based on the fact that, first of all, if companies are thinking about laying off people in such a scenario, they, can, they need to first think about what economic impact they're going to put on the country's economy, especially when the government is also trying to incentivize, uh, you know, small businesses and companies to sustain and, re and sustain people. Government itself has been giving uh, some very generous packages to the uh, you know, uh, poor and uh, uh, lower salaried uh, 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 the, the segment of the population. So if companies don't play their role now, when will they be able to play their role? Because, you know, these are the times of crisis. This is when everyone has said, we need to show kindness. We need sh to show empathy. We need to show courage. We need to show character. These are the traits of leadership which we need to bring forward. And I'm also saying with a lot of confidence in the coming few weeks and months, you will see uh, a lot of leadership changes because, you know, the, the leadership behaviors which were uh, very uh, successful in the past, the dynamics are going to change completely. Uh, at least this year, and I see that going forward even, the, uh, the leaders who were always focused on profits and revenues and, and whatnot, uh, that's not going to be the mantra anymore. It's going to be about how caring and respectful you are towards people and their situation, how well you are caring for their safety and health and well-being, because, you know, this is what employees uh, uh, notice. And I was reading a research, and I'll just give you some numbers to get a, 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 an idea. Uh, it's, it's, it's a research which has been conducted, uh, and I think it includes the U.S. market also and Europe. Uh, that organizations that lay off employees, you know, as a knee-jerk reaction or maybe due to their business situation, uh, 20, there is a 20% decline in job performance from the remaining employees. So imagine, you know, the productivity wow. goes down. There 20%. is a 20%. There is a 36% wow. decline, 36% decline in organizational commitment. Imagine. There is a 41% decline in job satisfaction. Imagine how disengaged your employee population, the remaining people whom you thought are your top performers, you retain, and their job satisfaction levels go down by 41%, and they will eventually leave you. And there is a 31% increase in voluntary turnover the next year. Imagine. Yeah, so when you come out of this crisis and when you are trying to retain your top performers, all of them will leave because they would have seen that when it mattered most, you were not able to, uh, to retain uh, employees. As Isa was just mentioning, you know, this is the time when you need to take care of even the non-performers uh, because, you know, they can't find better options anywhere else. The whole market is, is a bit shaky right now. So, uh, so, you know, this is the time when we need to show what I call courage, character, and clarity of purpose. Purpose is going to be the, uh, the differentiator. If you, are, if you have a purpose which is related to the, to the well-being of people and well-being of the society and the community that you're operating in, uh, your organization will be successful in the, in the months and years ahead. If you are only looking at profits and uh, ways of making money and uh, are not worried too much about, you know, things which uh, matter most to the people, especially in the given circumstances, that's not going to uh, be a guarantee of success. Because, you know, there are very small little things. The way you need to, uh, companies which never bother to uh, a lot about, let's say, safety, health, environment, let's say, a software uh, house. 
Yeah, the, the companies which have manufacturing facilities normally care a lot about safety, health, environment, and uh, a lot of companies even in that segment, uh, you know, don't uh, don't do that, uh, especially in the local uh, sector. But generally, people, uh, companies with manufacturing facilities uh, uh, put a lot of focus on that area. Now, even the software houses would have to put a lot of focus on that area because you know there are going to be SOPs which you have to follow. You have to ensure that your safety health practices are proper, your employees are protected, your insurance plans are designed like that, that they don't feel the burden if they get into a, a you know a difficult situation. So you know the entire dynamics, the entire arena of doing business is going to change. And again, it's a very commonsensical thing. Companies which are planning to lay off because of this uncertain uh, uh, development, uh, either they did not do the manpower planning properly, if they are thinking they can uh, survive by uh, yeah, when we come out of this lockdown, and we know, inshallah, we'll come out of this lockdown. So this, mm -hmm. this is going inshallah. to show, apart from all the other factors and figures that I mentioned, that if they did not, uh, if they're thinking of laying off, they are either, uh, they did not do the manpower planning properly, and mm -hmm. that's one, or if they're thinking that they can still sustain the business, uh, of in, in the same uh, space and with the same revenues, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then it's actually an opportunity. And you know, I know companies which, uh, even if they're laying off, and there are some big players uh, who have done that in the market, who are uh, doing that but doing it very respectfully. So there are ways to do it. There are ways to you know help people come out of this crisis. Like HRSG, we provide a lot of outplacement services also. So the companies are approaching us and uh, asking us to, on their expense, to help uh, people who are getting mm -hmm. displaced because of this uncertainty, uncertainty mm -hmm. to, uh, to you know, be adjusted somewhere else. So there are a lot of uh, things happening right now. But as I said, it's going to be the courage and the character of leaders, uh, which is going to define uh, the, the leadership uh, attributes going forward. And it is going to be how clear are you in terms of your purpose. So it's not just going to be about, you know, having a healthy p &L. It's also going to be about having, you know, healthy employees and making sure you are able to steer them out of this crisis. Excellent. Ahmed, uh, we were in conversation, ladies and gentlemen, with Ahmed Ali Zia, CEO of People and Business Partnering at HRSG, talking about the three C's. My key takeaway, I, I love this three C's, Ahmed. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Courage, character, and clarity of purpose. We talk about yes, and I, I, I call it the, these are the three C's to defeat the one C, which is the Corona. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I, I think uh, thumbs up to you. <laughs> De defeating the fourth one. So make a BCP and having a plan. I think that's so brilliant. Uh, can you please Amit, uh, share with us on parting thought we have? I think we just being uh, mentioned that we're running short on time. Uh, how was your experience in the 2008 economic downturn? You mentioned that you were, you were leading the HR practices uh, in the Middle East, probably. What were the key takeaways on, on that experience? Yes. Uh, so, yes, uh, uh, good, good question, Abraham, and thanks for reminding. I was uh, heading the HR function when the uh, recession set in uh, and Middle East was badly impacted. I was based in Dubai heading almost a uh, 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 1 billion euro uh, businesses HR function in the Middle East region. And uh, uh, it was my first year. Uh, Unilever, as you know, is a big FMCG. Uh, Gulf and Saudi Arabia used to be the most profitable business for, for Unilever, uh, and it still is. Uh, and, and we were given a clear brief by the leadership, uh, the global leadership, that they did not want to lay off a single employee. And this was a time when, you know, laying off employees was uh, basically a norm. There were huge layoffs. People were actually, uh, you know, uh, absconding from uh, the Middle East. They were leaving their cars and they were just, uh, you know, uh, uh, leaving uh, uh, the, the geography. So we were uh, clearly told that uh, we needed to protect our people and 
somehow be able to actually continue the trend of giving them increases as well. So it was a clear policy that no layoffs. And in fact, if we can manage to give salary increases, uh, that would be the, uh, the best thing to do. And this was the time when in Gulf, we were uh, the attrition, the employee turnover was hitting around uh, 15% in the Gulf and about 20% in Saudi Arabia. So, you know, it was a, a, a very difficult time. Uh, mm -hmm. However, what we did was we put together a very clear uh, business strategy, which was around involving employees. And as, you, as, as we said in the beginning, having a clear communication and telling them that this is the situation in the external market. However, we did not want people to lose their jobs and we wanted their inputs and participation in terms of giving company ideas on on cutting down the waste, cutting down the unnecessary costs in the value chain. So there were committees and subcommittees which were formed across all the business units and verticals and functions. And, uh, and, and uh, one of uh, each one of us from the leadership team was given the responsibility to lead those teams and to look at, you know, the avenues where we could do effective cost cutting. And you will be surprised that uh, the kind of uh, uh, waste that we were able to not only identify, but actually remove from the business, which was huge, which was huge compared to the cost of manpower. So uh, by doing that huge cost saving through, uh, uh, you know, uh, effectively eliminating the waste and the fat, uh, which was in the value chain, we were actually mm -hmm. able to give increases to, uh, to all our employees. And this was about 2000 people across the geography. So, and you can't believe, but our attrition rate came down to less than 3% in, uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia and less than 1% in Gulf. So it was a huge success. And uh, some of those people are still there. And I have some very good friends who were there with me at that time. And uh, mm -hmm. they still remember those days. So, you know, tough times, as I say, tough times don't last, tough people do. And this is what we need to show right now. That's what uh, I mean when I say there, are the, there is a character that needs to be displayed because tough people will outlast the tough times. And this is what we need to be at this point in time. However, this doesn't mean we become tough to uh, our people. We need to show the softness and the empathy and still pre, uh, handle this crisis uh, in, with all the toughness of character that we can show. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we moving on to uh, last couple of uh, minutes of our conversation with the panelists, we will pose a few questions that has been shared by the audience. Uh, if a struggling business does not have enough reserves to pay the employees during the crisis period and there are no revenues, should it borrow money from a bank to pay salaries during the zero revenue period or defer payments of salaries for a temporary period? Uh, Atarik, would you like, uh, wanna take that question, please? Yeah, um, thank you so much. And first of all, uh, uh, Abrar, I know Talib Saab is on the line as well. And I want to wish him a happy birthday because today is his birthday. So when, when you address him, uh, just remind him that. Um, coming back to the question, um, uh, your voice was breaking up. If you can short, quickly repeat the question for me. So we're talking about an SME, uh, small business, not having any revenues at all. And uh, should they go to the banks? Should they want to have a deferred payment just to pay the salaries? Right. So I, I think that this, that's a very relevant question. And yes, mm -hmm. uh, your first option is always borrowing from the bank because a lot of venture capitalists are holding on. But mm -hmm. the other opportunity, you can also think that how can you make your employees your partners? You always have the equity in the business. So you can mm -hmm. offer them the equity. I think, I think that will be a golden handshake. And mm -hmm. there's a better chance of sustaining some valuable people. One more thing, which is very important, keep in mind that some companies will lay off some very important and good people or they leave. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is a great opportunity for other companies to really hire at this time. Instead of firing people, you could actually mm -hmm. get some good talent, which is out in the market. Well, I think hiring and firing also is a major cost. If, uh, I mean, the industry practitioners are here, everyone will tell you that it, takes a lot of time, number of hours that HR teams uh, and the line managers, they go and they take through. Uh, 
Farhan, I think Abraham, the next Abraham, question. I just want to make one point, very important, very quickly, uh, because Did this you? is a great time if some pe someone loses their job. So just like when the mm -hmm. business is slow, you pay in the store. They should mm -hmm. go and get some courses and get education like IOBM and many, many other institutions. So this may be a great time to get some added skills and training. There's no better time to uh, retrain yourself and retain your brain. Uh, point validly noted. Farhan, uh, SMEs getting loans uh, and getting loans to the giving loans to the employees. Is is there an opportunity? Uh, getting loans. Sorry, can can you uh, come again on the yeah, question? I, I think the question is towards SMEs. Uh, are we dishing out more SME loans? Uh, is there, is there a bank policy? I know standard uh, the State Bank of Pakistan has got uh, salary, this thing. Is there banks and banking getting more friendly towards SMEs right now? Well, I think, uh, uh, you know, something that, um, that, you know, we really need to give the due here, uh, the due appreciation here, is that mm -hmm. the state is very, very proactive in difficult times. And I think the kind of regulations that they've, uh, that they have, that they have uh, uh, you know, shared with all the financial institutes ac across, ac across the industry have been very, very supportive of, you know, and, and to be very em empathetic towards uh, the businesses, whether it is for individuals or for companies as well. So I think that is all there. Uh, the only thing that yes, State Bank has, been, has, has, uh, has taken into account is this, that there has to be a need for something mm -hmm. to to happen so if if you want you know if you want your 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 credit card or your personal loan to be kind of uh, rescheduled uh, for, or your principal you know deferred here has to be a fundamental underlying or you, know, you have to you have to prove that at a point in time so even for businesses i mean some of the options in terms of the of the, the refinancing um, of uh, of trade business as well as the thing you know the the the, the reduced interest rates for uh, loans for paying salaries and all is something that's there and it is something that is being very actively not only uh, practiced by the banks but it is very actively being followed up by the central bank as well because they would want to know as to what is happening in the market and and you know you you you'd actually uh, it's very interesting that they share these statistics where it's it's a very transparent process that they've set up so I think the, the state bank is very positive. The government is very supportive of, of these things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and by all means, if people have the need, I think they should make use of, of, of the facility that's being offered. It, it is. It, yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Point noted. Thank you so much, Farhan. Uh, we will hold on to the rest of the questions. We will come back to you. Thank you, audiences, for uh, really showering us and overwhelming us with all your questions. Uh, we will move towards the close. Uh, uh, it's been an honor. Thank you so much, panelists. And uh, as a tradition, we would want to invite Talib Saab to say a few words and say personal thanks to the panelists and the conversation. Talib Saab. Yes, Alaikum, and good evening to everyone. It's nice to see Tarek um, after a long time. I think we met last year in uh, Virginia when I was visiting um, uh, the state and uh, we had lunch together. Um, and thank you, Abra, for uh, being a great moderator. Good to see Ahmad, Farhan, and Isa. And uh, Sir, my, my pleasure and a very happy birthday to you. Thank you. It's uh, almost over. I think uh, the only <laughs> place where my birthday is valid is where Tariq is sitting. Otherwise, uh, uh, it's almost over. It's almost midnight. But thank you. Uh, I think we all had to uh, transform uh, because of uh, this crisis. Even uh, at uh, our institute, although we had our strategy that we will get into blended learning and more of uh, online teaching, uh, but that plan was for uh, 2021. And that strategy paper was already made, and if Javed Saab is still there, he was the he is the author of of that paper. Uh, uh, but after uh, February, um, I think 24, 25th, 
when the government decided to shut down all campuses, uh, we were uh, stuck with the situation where either we we had to make take a decision to save our semester, or uh, uh, and also save um, semester of our students so that their graduation is not extended. So while uh, I think all of you talked about transformation, so our concern was both uh, to save jobs, um, because any uh, any time you lose your semester, you lose the revenue also with that. And uh, you know, as as not for profit institution, our uh, revenue is based on tuition that is paid by students. Uh, so I, I think uh, so we decided to. Uh, transform our faculty members, give them uh, a very quick training on how to conduct classes. And uh, uh, I think you'll be happy to note that we were able to complete uh, our semester uh, uh, online and uh, almost 100% of our faculty members, even those faculty members who are very traditional type of uh, teachers, they were able to adapt to this technology. And uh, now we are going through our final assessments. And uh, the good news is that students were able to grasp the whole, whole idea of online uh, teaching. And uh, for example, the summer that we are about to start, well, we are going to be starting it next June, uh, uh, in June, second week of June. Um, you know, there's, there's more registration this, this, this semester, this summer than it was last year. So that means that uh, even students uh, were able to adapt to this, uh, this technology uh, and this, this way of teaching. And I think that would be a norm, at least for this year. Uh, I don't see uh, our students coming to the campus. Uh, right now, today, the government has extended to July 15th, but I see that to be extended further. I don't see any large gatherings on campus. I think we have started talking about virtual convocation, where we'll have uh, everything recorded and uh, people, uh, the, the graduates will be attending it virtually, which is happening in the States um, nowadays uh, that uh, all the convocations are being held uh, virtually and students are not allowed to go and attend their convocation. So I think it was a good transformation. And uh, so we were able to do both. We were able to retain 100% of our staff, 100% of our faculty, 100% of our management, and we were also uh, we were also uh, able to not cut the salaries. So we were able to save all that, and this was because of uh, uh, the quick transformation that took place uh, within the institution. And I think uh, one need to be more. Uh, as I agree with you that we need to take care of the employees because uh, if you don't take care of them during crisis, during difficult times, then that motivational level will definitely will go will go down. Uh, I forgot to acknowledge Dr. Shahid, our recent PhD. He just completed his PhD, I think, two weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, um, um, so, uh, so I think we were uh, uh, able to do that, and uh, uh, I agree. I think uh, it was mentioned uh, uh, by Ahmad that if you don't take care of your employees, uh, their uh, motivational level. So, if you lay off people, uh, the people who are with you, even if they are high achievers, their motivational level uh, will go down, and. Uh, they might leave you once the things are back to normal. Uh, so uh, I'm very much for it. Uh, take care of your employees, uh, but you also have to push them to uh, adapt uh, uh, the changes that uh, that uh, are taking place because of technology. And uh, so I mean, you'll be surprised to know that some of our senior faculty members, who are great researchers, but they are not text savvy they were also they were able to adapt to to recording lectures and uh, working on lms and working on moodle and working on uh, zoom and other uh, technology 
So I think uh, uh, so I think a lot of organizations survived uh, because of that. I hope that things will get back to normal. Uh, I don't see it getting back to normal very soon. Uh, I think it will be a test case when things uh, will, be, will soften up from Saturday, shops will open. And we hope that uh, if we survive this crisis, uh, I think uh, things will uh, start uh, coming back to, uh, to normal routine. Uh, I mean, this is the, the peak uh, you know, uh, month to, uh, for, for companies to sell their products because of ETH. So I think uh, the survival of a lot of these companies, especially small uh, shops and uh, a lot of these small businesses would be in the next two to three weeks, whether uh, they'll be able to uh, recover uh, some of their uh, revenue. So again, I thank uh, all of you. It's almost midnight. So um, um, uh, that you were with us and, uh, I was also going through the questions. There were some very interesting questions. And I hope Kamran, um, uh, Bill Grammy, I think it's, these are his efforts along with our alumni association. Uh, so I hope that we continue to have such uh, discussions in future and have more of these uh, type of uh, sessions uh, where we can learn from uh, industry experts and uh, uh, see that what is really happening around and uh, uh, I hope uh, there's a vacancy in Standard Chartered, so I hope Farhan uh, is uh, looking at that position uh, soon, inshallah. And uh, uh, so uh, thank you very much and uh, all the best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And to all the audiences, uh, this was all for uh, Lessons for Leaders, IOBM, uh, Cut Salaries or Cut Jobs. Parting thoughts, direction is more important than speed. So in these tough times, ladies and gentlemen, stay strong and stay safe. Stay in touch, keep leading. Thank you very much, Allah Hafiz, and take Thank care. Thank you everyone, Allah Hafiz. Thank you, Allah Hafiz.